Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Bobby. And today, I give you the top eight most fun, unique, and broken builds. The further we go into the list, the builds will get stronger and stronger. So make sure you watch till the end. Alrighty then, let's jump right into it. Number eight, the Holy Bunk. Today, I will finally show you a Radiance build that does not use Pieta's sword. I know, I know, it's groundbreaking stuff here. This build combines heavy hitting holy damage and breaking posture to create a true meta overpowered super uber build. This pendant, the Hallowed increases poise damage from holy attacks. Now this is insanely effective. This will now make your holy type attacks melt through enemy poise. Go ahead and optimize this strategy to the max with the ring that increases holy damage and the ring that buffs critical strikes. And now you are cooking, baby. See, I like to keep it simple and use Justice. With its 200 smite plus the Radiant Weapon Enhancement spell, which also increases smite buildup, you now have a ton of smite and you'll be proccing it every other hit. Though there is only one true Unga Hunga Radiance Weapon, the Devotion's Might. This has 100 smite and a big banger smash. Perfect fit for this build with its ability to break down posture everyone else be using Pieta's sword, meanwhile we out here with the Holy Bunk. If you are looking for Lords of the Fallen weapons, vigor, armor, you can get it right here, cheap and safe. Just click my link in the description and use my code for a discount. As far as your umbral eyeballs go, you can use the Eye of Pale Butcher, which gives you wither health when killing an enemy with a grievous strike, which we will be doing very often, so that can continually restore your health. I definitely recommend having a light shield on your side arm. The shield can stack rune sockets. I mean, look at this. Look at this gold mine of radiant scaling. So, heavy hitting holy weapon like the Justice or Devotion's Might with a light shield on the side, Orius's Judgment and Radiant Weapon spell, Hollow Tip Pendant, increase holy damage, buff critical strikes, then prioritize strength and radiance. And boom, you got yourself a radiance build even more meta than Pieta's. Oh, that's bars. Even more meta than Pieta. Number 7. I'm sure you've heard of the Grim Reaper, but here we have the Grim Raider. This is a somewhat unique build, a hybrid for sure, but very powerful. The Hushed Saint's Halberd got that 150 poison. Well, let's bump that baby up even more with the Poison Weapon Enhancement spell. We now have a solid source of poison buildup. So much poison that one strike will proc it on this Weenie Hut Jr. here. Now, when combined with the Bloodbane Ring, we also have a strong source of bleed as well. There's plenty of weapon options for this type of build, but I'm using the Hushed Saint's Halberd simply because, well, it's really freaking strong on its own. Plus, 150 is a lot of poison buildup considering it has that swift and wide swinging moveset. Gotta love these halberds, man. As you might be able to tell, this isn't much of a spellcaster build, though you still can make use of some umbral spells, such as Diminishing Missile to nerf the enemy, got Poison Javelin which is pretty powerful, and the Poison Fog. It feels great spamming the fog, and with the Bloodbane Ring, this fog and the javelin will both proc bleed as well. Recently, I have not been using the Pendant of Burden as much, but it does work very well with poison, and since we are constantly proccing poison here, I believe it's worth it. And then I got Mine Owner Ring just because you can never have too much Stanima. And yeah, a very fun and solid build. Number 6, the Ignite Knight. For anyone who said, the entire game is full of enemies resistant to fire damage, any Inferno build is totally unviable. Well, this build is for you, my fellow jabroni. With this setup, we got some bleed, a ton of burn, and a double ton of ignite. The main synergy here is combining the Ring of Infernal Devotion with the best Inferno weapon in the game, the Grinning Axe. God damn it, Bobby! This handsome young man inflicts 80 burn and 80 ignite. So combined with the Ring of Infernal Devotion, you can proc ignite on near every single hit. This axe also deals fire and wither damage, so it goes perfectly with the Ring of Night's Fire. I mean, that is some beautiful optimization right there. A solid weapon to power stance with this is the Bloodlust Sword. Combining both these weapons gives us that triple stacker slapper of bleed, burn, and ignite. 
You can use any spells you want, but definitely use Infernal Weapon, because this will increase your Ignite buildup even more. I recommend using Rogar's Delight Pendant here. This will be most effective, but if you don't have this yet, you can use the Pendant of Burden, as this will boost the damage from the burn effect. Then you can use any armor that makes you look badass. Moving forward, number 5, the Frozen Shinobi. Have you been looking for a fun and unique fist build that you can use to go around everything in sight? <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, this is essentially a challenge type build because it forces you to play a certain way. You gotta be crafty and it can be difficult, but it can be very effective if done right. What we got here is light weapons using fast attacks to deal frost and wither, but the catch is using the umbral eye of bloody pilgrim. So the plus side is that we are dealing massive wither damage very quickly, but the downside is that these attacks alone won't actually deal permanent damage. We must use other tactics to permanently execute on that wither buildup. Spamming regular R1 or R2 attacks only build wither, though charged heavy attacks, running heavy attacks, heavy attacks out of roll, and the kick all deal actual damage. When you proc the frost, that burst of damage will work too. And grievous strikes, of course, will deal actual damage as well. Oh, hold up, wait, the, yo, the wall just ate her. The wall just ate her, but, oh, nope, no, it, no, it didn't, there she is. Oh yeah, 10 out of 10 masterpiece, game of the year. Game of the year, better than Elden Ring. So you gotta be nimble, man, you gotta be crafty, like a true shinobi. This build is not for the faint of heart. You can accrue all this wither damage in one false move, and boom, the enemy is back to being as healthy as a newborn American baby. Also, we have our bow, the assassin's bow. Yeah, quite devastating with a high agility level. And so this can be used for quick shots to deal regular damage to execute on that wither. So I have the talons in my main hand and Jeffrey dagger in left hand. This way I can two hand the talons to use the fist unique moveset because this boxer punching moveset is pretty cool. I mean, sometimes I want to feel like Mike Tyson. I may like fun kick more than other people. It's just who I am. So the way the umbral eye works, you actually want to use warrior's claw and Melchior's ring because the increase in physical damage will translate into an increase in wither buildup. Then the Mine Owner's Ring for more stamina because we're going to be doing a lot of rolling around and moving quickly. But, by the way, you should know, Frost is probably the worst status effect to be using here. Something like Burn or Poison with damage over time that will automatically execute on that Wither damage would be more viable here. Using Poison would be most effective. But I mean, my goal was simply to make a unique and challenging Fist build. So this is how it ended up. Number four, the Poison Pew Pew. If you don't know already, the Dervla's crossbow is the grand poobah of all bows in this game. You got that triple pew pew dealing massive damage. But of course, you run through ammunition like a madman. But the eye of Lydia the dumb bitch, <clears throat> no, I mean, I mean numb witch, means you don't even gotta worry about ammo at all. You can keep blasting away. As far as actual weapons go, I recommend using a poison type weapon, such as Kukaj and Sword. Not only does it mainly scale with agility, but poison is perfect for a long range archer build like this, because you proc the poison, and then you run away to a safe distance where the poison can slowly damage them while you finish them off with your arrows. I got Lil Jeffrey's dagger on the side simply to get the benefits from more rune sockets, specifically the one that increases damage of ranged attacks. Now of course you want the inner serpent pendant and the black feather ranger ring, but I'm also using the ring of night's fire because two out of three of my bolt types I'm using are wither and fire. By the way, remember, there is a headshot multiplier in this game, making headshots deal double damage. There is also a crotch shot boost in this game. Any shots to the crotch deal quintuplet damage. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Congratulations, my fellow jabroni. You have made it into the big top oh three. Okay, Third place, the Glass Cannon Grand Poobah Spellcaster. 
This build is a master of all magical schools, the Grand Pooba of all sorcery. With this build, you can viably use all three magic types. We can use the rings that allow you to use radiant spells and or the ring for inferno spells with a different catalyst. So with just the lost Barescus, we're using a beautiful array of different spells. Though the one item that makes this actually viable is the Shuja Harmony Hoop. Casting spells from different magic types will amplify this effect even more. So this pendant incentivizes you to go back and forth between magic types. Umbral, Radiance, Umbral, Inferno, Radiance, yeah, you get it. Back and forth will continually increase the damage buff. So honestly, you can mix and match however you prefer, though the most effective route would be to only do Umbral and Radiance, or do only Umbral and Inferno. That way you can optimize either Holy or Fire damage. Though you can just use all three, whatever you want, test it out, have fun. Some of the best spells I recommend you combine together are the Diminishing Missile Nerf, Lucent Beam Kamehameha, Orius's Judgment, Magma Surge, Inferno Slash, Lingering Despair for larger enemies or boss fights. If you are not using all three magic schools and you're just using one of the rings, meaning you have a ring slot open, I recommend the Mana Stone Ring. Because to be honest, this build is absolutely insane. Like, it's damn near invincible if you have the mana. Mana consumption is the biggest problem with this build. For an actual weapon though, the Dark Crusader Melted Sword is a great choice. This is a very diverse weapon, works with all different types of builds, deals powerful physical and wither damage with a low stat requirement. So solid choice baby. And number 2, the Pure Physical Strength build, going deep into pure physical damage. I'm not gonna lie dude, I have never defeated one of these pimped out Grim Reapers so easily than with this build. One of the most underused and yet best weapons for straight physical damage is the green thumb. No, 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 the red hand. Yeah, can't say this game ain't got some sick ass weapon designs, man. It's literally got a red, a red, <laughs> a red hand. Oh Jesus. We want to double down on physical damage. The physical increase pendant, warrior's claw, the physical increase ring, Melchior's ring, and the Gravix or Ixon runes that you can socket for physical damage buffs. And then the final ring, I choose you, Ring of Bones, so that we can truly wear the heaviest big boy armor we got. We out here looking like an evil iron giant. You'll want a light shield on the side, not only to get the extra rune sockets, but also so you can have another attack combo moveset available to use. Great against mobs of smaller Weenie Hut Juniors. The sword scales equally with strength and agility, but I recommend focusing more into strength. This way, you can use the lump hammer to great effect. Yes sir, we are definitely taking advantage of our throwables with this build. You got the lump hammer for the big bunks, and accusing spirit to drastically nerf an enemy's defense and attack power. I love this ugly face. This is definitely one of the most powerful, most reliable builds that you can get. In the first place spot, we have a wild card. The Abiding Invader. This build is focused on PvP invasions. And my prime choice of weapons, the Ebonlight Abiding Defender Withering Cold Grand Sword. And now you see why I named this build the Abiding Invader, right? Because it's focused on invading PvP? Yeah, see, I'm a f***ing genius, bro. My brain is f***ing huge. This sword is awesome, dude. Firstly, and most importantly, it looks cool, right? But it's also got bleed, it's got frostbite, and it's got wither damage, which are all especially effective against other human players, making this weapon and build lethal in PvP. But to be honest, a big part of this build is using frost or bleed salts. If you can enhance this weapon with some extra frost or bleed, it tips it right over the edge from being decently effective to being very effective. So I definitely recommend using salts. And then I recommend a small shield on this side. Two reasons. One is for the parries. Gotta have that parry on lock, especially in PvP. Secondly, it'll switch up the moveset. Changing your moveset mid-fight can screw with your opponent's mind. I'm wearing the Hollowed Tippy Pendant because even though the Abiding Defender Sword does not deal any holy damage, I do find myself using Radiant Spells very often, specifically Lucent Beam and Aureus Judgment. 
Instead of a shield, you can go big boy balls and power stance with the bloody glory. Both scale strength and radiance, both dealing a massive amount of bleed. You got frost, you got holy and wither damage. God damn bro, you got it all. So now let me know, did you like these builds? Comment down below your own set of favorite builds and what you've been using lately. Make sure to subscribe for more epic content and thank you for watching.